I love the fact that the choir is still going do 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 Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing? Who said sore? Okay. Who else is sore? I see you, Lee. Hi. <laughs> Lee's up in there going, oh. <laughs> All right, so we're not as young as we used to be. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, hi, Chris. Huh? You have a moment? We're not there yet. <laughs> I'll get to you. That's wonderful you have a moment. I love the fact that the community was here yesterday helping us unload the pumpkins. It was wonderful to see all those kids. And they lifted pumpkins, and we didn't have to. I'm going, everyone they lift is saving our backs. <sighs> you did 51 of them? <laughs> it, that, it, that would, that's how many were in the truck. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for showing up yesterday. It was a glorious day. God held the rain until we got done, and we had a good time, didn't we? I would like to welcome our honored guest this morning from, from the National Guard, Sergeant Chen, and his wife, Danny. Welcome. Sergeant Chen will be talking with us after service this morning about what's going on in our town and maybe answer a couple questions for us. And I couldn't think of a better way to talk to everybody about this other than to have somebody that's dealing with the work every day of the week. And Everything that I've seen has made my heart so bursting with pleasure that these guys are wonderful. And they're just so sweet and so open to our newcomers that it's, it's just wonderful. And by the way, that is the term so everyone realizes that we're adopting. We're calling them the newcomers into our community because that's what they are. They're not aliens, they're not immigrants, they're not whatever else political term that we can use to put on these people. They're newcomers into our community. And as we welcome them, how the reflection that what we show them that we understand about God's light in our lives is reflecting onto them. And that is so gracious. Join me in prayer, please. Gracious and holy God, we come before you this morning. So grateful for so many things. We thank you for our community yesterday. We thank you for our church today. Lord, as we bring ourselves into worship, we ask that you keep the world outside for just a few minutes helping our hearts and minds to engage with you and one another in your light. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our light of God moment is becoming popular with us because we're starting to become more aware. We're becoming more aware of where God is around you and within you. Chris, you said, do you have a moment for us? Would you please stand and wait for the mic? I'd like to uh, amplify what uh, Pastor David said, but I'd also, my moment of God moment uh, has to do with the children who helped us. And I don't know whether any of you remember, but I have three examples. One was a little girl that if you 
load, unloaded the pumpkins last year, you saw her load up wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow herself and brought them up. Well, this year, that same little girl is a bigger girl, and she did something different. She'd go over to the, where the truck was and pick out the biggest pumpkin <laughs> and bring it over to the patch. I gave up counting until we were double digits with the number of pumpkins she had. The second was a little boy who probably is the younger brother of a Boy Scout because he was this tall. And he had a pumpkin that was probably half his size. And he was bringing it over. And that was just amazing. I followed him because I thought he'd drop it, but he never did. And then you notice out in front the pink, the orange and white pumpkins. There were three girls. I started helping them with them, and they did it so well, I said, hey, go to it. And they finished it themselves. And I think these exemplify the spirit of God and in terms of the volunteerism in our church. Thank you. Amen, Chris. Thank you. Hi, Naomi. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to just share from, we resumed our Bible study on Thursday morning this past week. Um, we had started in May regarding uh, meeting the spirit. Um, we're still fairly new into the progression of the study. Um, but this past Thursday, we were a small group, uh, but again, we're two or more gathered. Um, anything can happen. But our discussions this week were just, I, I can't even have the descriptive word, but it was so enlightening. And what we talked about and drilled down about provided so much clarity, um, further clarity. Um, it's you. always a journey that we're going to be working on in terms of the Holy Spirit. Um, but I'm just very grateful for Pastor Dave's leadership, um, his guidance, and the challenges that he raises to us every week. Um, but again, it's been a wonderful study so far. Um, and I just wanted to extend an invitation to everybody here or at home um, to really pray and think about joining us in this study because it's just been nothing short of fabulous. So you know that was her light of God moment. I did not put her up to that as a commercial. <laughs> Although Bible studies are a lot of fun because our job, my job as your pastor and teacher is not to brainwash you or to get you to agree with me. As a matter of fact, I think Naomi can, and Jim, hi Jim, can both attest to the fact that some of our best discussions that we have is when they don't agree with me. Don't you agree, Jim? Jim doesn't agree. <sighs> I keep on saying I need a race, I need a race. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I did, didn't I? <laughs> My wife would say that too, and I'm sure she will when I get home. And now let us bring our hearts and minds into worship. Good morning. And, and welcome, and thank you for coming out this dreary day. It's a pleasure to see all of you here. There were no announcements in the announcement book, but I know Nancy has an announcement. And Tim. Oh, and Tim too. Good morning, everybody. It was so interesting and fun to see all the people, as we've said before, that came yesterday to help unload the pumpkins. It was amazing. And people, I, I've lived here all my life, and I've never met these people, some of them. Uh, it was a wonderful day. Um, I do want to point out that we have a chart in the hallway right outside the office. Please volunteer for an hour, maybe two hours, to help sell these pumpkins. Uh, one person or two cannot stay there all day long with no help. And so look at the chart and uh, see if you can give us an hour or two hours or even a little longer. It's actually fun to talk to the public when they come in and they look around and they're amazed. And uh, we will be open today even if it's raining. Normally we don't open in the rain, 
but we have a lot of people that came yesterday after it was closed because of the rain, and they will be coming back today, rain or not, because it's our first day, actually whole day. So thank you very much. Our Memorial Golf Tournament, which was scheduled <clears throat> for this afternoon at 1 o'clock, um, has been postponed until next Sunday, October 1st, same time, 1 o'clock, up at Hemlock Ridge. If any of you uh, here today are going to join us, men, women, children, whoever wants to play is welcome. Um, we play best ball, and we uh, have... Uh, carts so you don't have to walk so if you're crippled like Bob you can make it <laughs> and um, we, we welcome everyone so please let me know downstairs at coffee hour if you intend to come next Sunday um, tea, tea time again is one o'clock be there a little earlier thank you very much Jim's afraid he's gonna melt <laughs> he's so sweet Oh, I have an announcement. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bible study. Evening Bible study has been moved to Wednesday evening at 6.30 in the Rainbow Room. Thursday morning Bible study continues to be at 10 o'clock in the Rainbow Room. September 27th, I believe... We are meeting at Bethlehem Lutheran Church for a study, an ecumenical study, on the chosen. So if you would wish to attend that, please let me know so we can make sure we have study guides available for you. Thank you. Would you please rise and uh, do the call to worship with me? As we gather together, we remember God's faithfulness. In our troubles and wanderings, we seek God's guidance. In our pain and anxiety, we seek God's uh, comfort. In our hunger, we seek God's provision. In our living, we experience God's grace, goodness, and love. Let, Let us worship God, God together, together, song and praise. Please remain standing and join me in hymn number 602, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Please be seated and join me in the unison prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord, in our worship, we anticipate and acknowledge the blessings that come from your spirit. Every day, we continually learn of your abundant grace as we take to heart the stories of your endless love for us. Holy One, it was you who led our ancestors in faith with food for their journey to the promised land. You led them forward on their march to freedom. When Paul and the Philippians faced persecution, they encouraged one another in the confidence of your presence with them. Lord, guide us in the work that we are engaged in as we follow Jesus' teaching in working on your kingdom. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's reading will be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who wants. <clears throat> Let me take a deep breath here for a minute. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again at noon and about three o'clock in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why are you standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received the denarius. So those who came were hired first. They expected to receive more, but each one of them received the denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm being generous? So the last will be first 
and the first will be last. So ends our reading this morning. May these words inspire our hearts and minds so that we may show the world that we are equal in the sight of God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we place ourselves before you this morning with grateful hearts and minds. Lord, it is through you and with you that we understand that we are equal in your sight. Lord, as we come together, we ask that you block the world outside for just a few moments. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts show your love for us and all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. What an interesting reading this morning. So the first, so the last will be first, and the first will be last. That was Jesus' ending saying for this morning. But what about the first? The ones who worked the full day. If you were one of the first to be hired to work the field, would you feel like you were taken advantage of? Even though you were paid what you were promised? See, the owner kept his word. He promised them a denarius, and he delivered on his promise. Yet even being delivered upon his promise, they felt they were taken advantage of. When we come to Christ, to a community, to a job, is it possible that some people think the same way on different levels? After all, you were here first. You have invested the most. So shouldn't your say and what you want carry greater weight than the individual that just came through the doors? But that's not how the landowner sees it, is it? Throughout life, we walk through many different doors and in, into many different fields, and we're hired to work in many different fields. In the secular world, we put together our resume, we go out on an interview, and when we find a position that we believe pays us what we are worth in a job that seems to be challenging, but not too challenging, we gladly take it, and we're very joyful about the experiences that come. But now, two, three, six months later, there you are doing your job all happy and content, and in walks this new person. And management walks up to you and says, Bob, I want you to train this guy. And Bob feels, ah, your ego has grown a little bit. Your self-worth is elevated just a little bit. And you feel like you've arrived at a new level in your chosen field. And as the training begins, you dive into it wholeheartedly. You put together little charts to make sure that everybody knows what they're doing. And the training begun, begins. But so doesn't the small talk, doesn't it? We start to learn about one another. We start to experience a little bit more about one another. And all of a sudden, you find out, because it's disclosed, that the individual that you are training is making more money than you are. Suddenly, that dream job that you wanted so badly, 
all of a sudden becomes a little bit of a nightmare. What do you mean they're earning the same as uh, more than I'm earning, and I'm the one that's training them? What's going on? Well, if you're like most office staff, you might decide to march into your manager's office and begin making demands of him in the company. And maybe because of your performance, just maybe you're given a small raise. But what did that raise cost you? What did that scene set you up for? You see, you're never going to know. All you know is that the past pathway that you took led you to a little bit more money. And what kind of reward is that? You know, maybe your supervisor had his eye on you for something else. Before we act, our pathways are many. They are infinite. But once you act, then you're committed to that course. And as we know, if you march into your supervisor's office and you make a little bit of a scene, it's kind of hard to backtrack that and go, uh-oh, not a good move, Dave or Bob. Maybe the supervisor was giving you a test. And congratulations. You failed it. And there you go back to your desk, back to your job, because the decision that you made to act was taken. No going back. Your fate is sealed. You know, for the laborers, the parable, be parable begins in a familiar world for them in which day labor laborers were hired from sun up to sun down and were paid at the end of every day in accordance to Torah, Torah regulation in Jewish practice. A denarius was a normal day's pay for manual laborers that were hired by the day, but it was Barely, it was barely enough for a family to live at a survival level. Interestingly, it was the landowner and not the manager who went to the marketplace to hire during the day. By the 11th hour, 5 p.m., he continued to go and seek. We hear no explanation about why these individuals were not hired during the day, yet here they are just standing idly. The first group of workers were hired with an oral contract for the normal amount. The later groups were promised whatever is right, raising the question but not giving an answer to what was right. Although the first has a contract, the second can only trust the landowner's sense of judgment of what is fair and right. But also in reality, all are truly depending upon the landowner's trustworthiness. Even though the landowner lived into his agreement with the first group, the parable is upsetting to Matthew's hearers. And it may be upsetting to some of us as well, as it functions to challenge us to reverse conventional values, including the sense of justice and fairness. See, we willingly walked into this field that is not our own. It belongs to a landowner that is far greater than any of us. For it is he 
who truly understands one's worth. We enter into this garden, this garden, not that, well, that's an extension of our garden. It's where we keep our pumpkins. Because I could see it now, if I let the pumpkins in the house, people are going to get upset, so. We walk into this garden, willingly and lovingly. And there are some of us that are workers that have been here. And we'll stay here. And these building and this garden will be in place long after we've departed. You see, the landowner, in his eyes, everyone's work is equal. There is no such thing as I worked harder than you did. No such thing. It's we both work hard. There's no such thing as I worked harder, so I deserve more. I have worked harder, so I deserve a larger say, a larger slice of the pie. I have been here longer, so I deserve more. Really? Those are the tough words. It's not God's words. It's not the landowner's words that are tough. It's those words. However, that does not hold true for God's garden. And it definitely should not hold true for this body of Christ. When we look at the work that we are called into, when we look at the work we are called to do, and staying within the parable, each of us is called to the work in the field, with the gifts that we were given when they are needed and when they are wanted. God leads each of us here in his own time. But make no mistake, make no mistake about this, folks. It is God who has called you here. God has called you here today and now and now to do the work. For those involved in the work for such a long time, I pray that you have found the rewards great in the work that you have engaged in, that at your hearts, your minds, your spirits, your souls have grown more than they were before. For those of you who have been involved with the work, Welcome the new workers in the field. For everything changes when the new worker comes. The work is easier, it's lighter, it's more enjoyable because we have more involved. Matthew understands the parable al 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 this way. You see, for him, for Matthew, the landowner is the judge is the eschatological judge, God or Jesus, who is indeed good. And the payment at the end of the day is the last judgment. The first and the last, in Matthew's view, refers to insiders, to Christians who have worked long and faithfully, and the latecomers who have not. Those who worked all day began not by objecting to the grace others had received, but by expecting that they would receive more. When the workers received their just rewards, they were not objecting to that, but that the others received an equal reward for their labor, making them equal to those who worked all day. However, they have what they have by justice. The others are made equal by grace. And that is what God offers us. You're never late to the party, ladies and gentlemen. Brothers and sisters, this is a party 
that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all are welcome to come in. And whether they come and they do a lot or they do a little, it doesn't matter. For God's grace, and it is only by God's grace that we have forgiveness, that we have love, and we have peace. Let us learn to love one another and stop judging one another by the world's ways. Let us learn to be a little bit more Christ-like and let leave the judgment to God, for only God and Christ are worthy of that judgment. May it be so. Amen. Our next hymn will be, O God of Every Nation, number 680. Please stand as you are able. God is so gracious, so willing, so just, so fair. It is us that make our commitments. We commit as Christians to give of our time, talent, and treasures wherever they are needed. And we do that faithfully and in love. At this time, let us take our morning offering. So if you're new in our sanctuary and you're new amongst us, we are not passing around a collection plate at this time, but we have an offertory box in the back of the sanctuary. Please rise and give as you are able. For those of you that are sitting at home and you wish to make an offering, there is a PayPal button on your screen. Feel free to hit it whenever you would like. At this time, let our morning offering commence.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers of joy and concern. We thank you for hearing and satisfying our needs. We ask that you accept this token of our faith and our appreciation that is being returned to you. We ask that you instill in our leadership the wisdom of how best to use these gifts to supply for those in need. Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Please be seated. We now come to the moment of our worship where I consider to be one of the most sacred moments that we have. For God calls us together in community to be with one another, to sit with one another, to hold one another, to celebrate with one another, just to hang out together. And how gracious and how loving is that? This is what God's gift is to us. And it's miraculous, for no one withholds it from you. You can come and walk through the doors and to be with your people whenever your heart desires, in joy or in sorrow. But you know, that's why we're together, is to hold one another. Because life can be tough. Life can be a bear sometimes. And on the other hand, life can be such a joy. And we need people to be with us. So at this time, if you have a joy or you have a concern that is sitting on your heart and you wish to raise it before God and your people, please take this time and do this. Nobody has a joy or a concern. <laughs> We're doing okay. <laughs> Hi. It's not I, really a prayer request, but I just did see something I thought was very interesting yesterday, and I have to praise these people for the courage that they have, our new begin. what did you call them, new fellowship? Newcomers. I saw a couple walking from Shaw's to the, to the Motel 8, and they were carrying their groceries on their head. How many of you could do that? <laughs> and they wasn't, they just walked right along, and I just thought, we have a lot to learn from these people. These people mm. came from a lot of things that we can't even imagine. And uh, here they were, very proudly, 
walking with their groceries, and I mean a big bag. I was just totally amazed. So, our prayer then will be. Acceptance. And the courage these people have is more courage than I would have the way they're aiming in the courage they just have more courage than, than I can even imagine. So we have a lot to learn, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will, Sandy. It's okay, hon. <laughs> So everybody keep an eye out for Sandy in the next couple of days as she goes to Shaw's. <laughs> and let's see what she learned. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, this is my, I love when the choir's in. <laughs> Barbara does too. <laughs> I just want to lift up the, the joy that those of us who were in the pumpkin patch yesterday experienced um, with everyone, not only all of those who were working, but um, our customers that came along, and especially the little kids that just find such delight in all the curious pumpkins, and especially when we offer them a little sticker. Do you want a sticker? Oh, they're so excited about a little sticker. You got stickers? Oh, of course. Do you want a sticker? I didn't get no sticker. <laughs> um, also a joy that um, Deb continues to do well. She'll be facing probably another three or four days in the hospital this coming week. She didn't go last week, but she's doing well. And a real joy that Jen and Rob, um, who have been in Tewksbury for 22 years, um, are going to be moving uh, in a couple of weeks uh, to their, how many years? I mean, excuse me, Dobbs Ferry. <laughs> They're moving from Dobbs Ferry to Tewksbury. They'll be a couple of hours closer to us. Um, it's been um, a lot of work for them to plan on selling their house in Dobbs Ferry and to uh, plan on this move. So we're happy for them for this. Bob, are you going to be happy now that you're actually going to go to... Tewksbury and visit people rather than just show up. They go, hey, I'm here. <laughs> oh, you can watch the game. <laughs> the Lord is with you. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come before you this morning feeling so blessed, so cared for, and so loved. Lord, we accept the mantle of responsibility to spread your love, not only to people that we know and care about, but also newcomers into our community. For Lord, it is the light that you place within us that they are going to see first. And may this light that you place shine brightly in many different ways. Lord, we thank you for continued healing, for helping wherever you're allowed and wherever you can. We thank you for walking with each and every one of us as we face trials and tribulations and joy and happiness no matter where we go. We know that your love is faithful and your justice is pure. And we thank you for being with us and walking with us in all ways. Lord, we hold up our first responders at this time and we thank you for their participation yesterday with us as we gathered as your people, we saw faces, we saw and experienced so much love for you and your ways and for this community which is cherished in so many ways. 
Lord, we ask you to continue to inspire our hearts and minds in opening pathways into this meeting house so that all of your children can find a place in your work. Lord, we ask that you watch over all of our servicemen and women who serve around the country and within our community, and we ask that you keep them safe. We ask that you guide them and that you guide their hearts. And we ask that you bring them home safely to their families that willingly and lovingly place others before their own needs and wants. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you do for us every day. We ask that you continue to lead us, to guide us, and to tolerate us when we fall short of where you would like us to be. We thank you for lifting us when we fall. And we thank you for holding us when we have nowhere else to turn. Lord, do you know that for some, what is sitting in our hearts and minds, we could not find words for today. So in this holy silence, we ask you to enter us, to read our hearts and minds, and to know what it is that we're feeling and thinking. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be Give Thanks, number 528 in your hymnals. Please stand as you are able.
please be seated. God gives us everything. God holds nothing back. But as we walk in the world, we accept the responsibility and the mantle of showing people how God rewarded us. Not because we deserve it, but because he wishes us to have it. It's the same with all. So my prayer for you this week is as you go out, may the Father's shield protect and keep you. May the lessons that his Son instilled upon us guide your footsteps, your words, and your meaning. And may the lessons in the tutorage of the Holy Spirit keep your hearts and minds open to the possibilities of what can truly be. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.